Hello guys, Winston here. Learning to use a CNC is a big undertaking, and one thing I think is worth understanding before jumping straight into things is what makes up a CNC machine. If you understand conceptually what the machine is, you then also have a better chance of figuring out what's going on when things inevitably go wrong. In this video, I'm going to be referencing my Shapeoko CNC, but the same basic principles apply to basically every other consumer grade machine on the market. Also, I'm going to be talking about things at a relatively high level. If you want a deeper dive into the nitty gritty, I'll point you to Edward Ford's book, Getting Started with CNC, available on Amazon, link in the description below. It's way more comprehensive than what I'm going to be covering because I think I'd bore you if this series was longer than about 20 minutes. So jumping right in, let's take a look at what most people would consider to be a fairly normal CNC machine, a Shapeoko 3, the XL variant to be exact. Everything you see here has one purpose, get a cutting tool, like this one, to your material stock so that the machine can carve out whatever it was that you wanted it to make. This by the way is an end mill, not to be confused with a drill bit. A drill bit is meant to cut with its tip only. An end mill has specialized cutting edges all along its flutes and can survive the lateral loads of being pushed sideways through material. Your workpiece will be securely mounted to the bed or table of your CNC. The table is bolted to the base which supports the rails. The rails allow for smooth linear motion of the gantry and spindle. The directions of motion on this machine are X, Y, and Z. Some machines choose to move the part to the spindle instead of moving the spindle to the part. This is a philosophical design difference, but the end results are the same. Because of the way CNCs move, the cutter can't reach underneath overhangs. This is an inherent limitation of three-axis machines, although you can sometimes work around this by flipping parts over, or using special tools. To move itself along each axis, the Shapeoko employs stepper motors and pulleys. The stepper motors make calculated rotations that translate into whatever linear distance of travel is commanded. Speaking of those commands, the Shapeoko is guided by a microcontroller board that connects to a PC via USB. The PC, or Mac, sends the Shapeoko a stream of instructions and the microcontroller plans out how it will execute them. Once the controller figures out where it's going, it triggers the stepper motors in the correct sequence to achieve the desired motion. Put all of these things together and you get a machine that can precisely and repeatably carve out a part with the spindle. In the case of the Shapeoko, the spindle is typically a compact router. If you swapped out the spindle for an extruder, this would be a 3D printer. Like I said last video, same DNA, the only differences are that the software packages needed to control these machines are different, and the CNC needs to be way stronger in order to stand up to the forces and vibrations generated during cutting. The reason I go through all this information is because, as an aspiring machinist, you're going to need to troubleshoot things, and to do that, you need an intuition about the machine's operation. If, for example, your part isn't coming out the right size, you need to figure out where that inaccuracy is coming from. It could be that your belts aren't tight enough and that the pulley is slipping. It could be that the pulley itself isn't locked with the stepper motor and slipping on the drive shaft. It could be that your spindle carriage is loose on the rails and wobbling or tilting, causing you to take a bigger bite out of your part than you expected. And sure, if you bought a different CNC machine that came from the factory pre-assembled, there are fewer things that could go wrong. But you will always need to be willing to pick up a hex wrench or a screwdriver when you're dealing with mechanical systems that are subjected to the kinds of stresses CNCs are. Your inkjet printer might be maintenance free, I guarantee that a CNC will not be, so know that going in. But I promise you, getting to that point where you're comfortable with your machine is worth it. Making things with traditional materials and digital precision is unbelievably satisfying. For those of you who aren't scared off yet, my next video in this series will be an overview of the CNC workflow, an all-encompassing phrase that describes everything from designing a part to generating the code that will control your CNC. Thank you all very much for watching.